Hello gamers and gatherers! Welcome to the Unfiltered Gamer board game show, the first of its kind for a Magic the Gathering series. The Magical Price, where I have two contestants who are going to attempt to figure out the price of a certain number of cards. We're playing today three different colors. It's going to be uh, green, I believe, uh, white, and artifacts. And there's nine cards total. How it's going to work is they have a scorecard, they have a uh, wonderful little sharpie here, and they're going to write down... Expo marker. An expo marker. And they're going to write down uh, the value they think, between one and a hundred, or if they think it's over a hundred, they'll put a hundred plus. And if they get it right, the closest person will win, and if there's a tie, they'll both get a point. And all you're trying to do is get the most points at the end of the show. Here with me today is Max. How's it going? And Alicia. They both do the live streams with us here and they've done some videos here. Max does a lot of the live stream, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and Alicia has done the TikTok videos for the Unfiltered Gamer TikTok. So I brought them here to together to do what's similar to board games. Uh, it's a little kind of niche thing that we do on the side, which is Magic the Gathering, where we are going to be playing Commander most of the time, but in this case, I figured It'd be fun to do a little bit of a game show. So we're going to do the Magical Price game. Are you guys ready to find the Magical Price? Oh yeah. All right, let's get started. Okay, the Magical Price. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna flip over one of these cards here. I'm going to talk about it. I'll give you as much information as I can without revealing what might make the value important. Remember though, that some cards in Magic are going to be worth a lot of money because they're very good cards. They're played in sets like Standard or Modern, or Vintage and Legacy, and other times they're going to be expensive because they're collector's pieces. Now, there's gonna be a wide variety of cards and um, I'll give you guys kind of how old they are. You can ask me questions if you want, but I can't tell you anything that relates to pricing, okay? And there's a couple like, I threw in a couple twists and turns here, I think, hopefully, and for you guys at home. And if you guys wanna play at home, you can go ahead and try and guess the prices and beat these two out. And for you more experienced Magic players, I think you'll have an easy time doing so because these guys are fairly new-ish. Now, Alicia is brand new to Magic as of like four months ago, and Max has been playing over a long period of time, but in little standard like bolts in, and whatnot. In smaller amounts, nothing crazily competitive, more just for the casual fun. Yeah, and uh, if I were to show a card to Max, pretty much any card, he probably would not know the value to it, unless it was literally one in his own deck, and then that still might not give him the exact value. Something like that. And Alicia plays, but I don't think she's ever even looked at the value of cards, unless I've specifically stated it. So I think it'll be a good, fun experience for you guys. I'm gonna get them all wrong. All wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. All right, so the first card up, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this card over and we will go ahead and play the magical price. This card here is called Entreat the Angels. It is a card that costs three white and two X, which means that in order to play this card from your hand, you'll have to pay X at least one and another one and then the three white, so a total of five at least. And it says you get to put a, an X, you get an X four four white angel creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. So for every time you pay both the X's, one, two, three, you get to put that many angels, four four flying angels. But what makes this card very unique, and in the format that it came out, it had a special effect and it was called Miracle. And Miracle says, if you cast this card uh, for its miracle cost, you can do so when you draw it, and only if it's the first card this turn. And you would pay instead of double X and three white, you would pay one X and two white. So you could pay four and two white, total of six, to get four, four, four flying angels, as opposed to the normal cost, which would be eight, nine, 10, 11 for the same value. So drawing it so, and playing it. Um, to get two angels, you have to pay one, two, three, four, five, ten dollars. To get how many? To get two angels. So you'd be two and two for the X's, that's four, plus three is seven. Oh, I thought you had to pay this whole thing you, for each. If for, so yeah, if you look at the card here, uh, it's basically what it's saying is pay X, <coughs> you have to pay both X's the same. So you'd pay one green and one other green and then three white, that would get you one angel. Because okay. X would be equivalent to one. And then two more X's is another angel. Uh, and then, yeah, if you paid another two. So in this case, if you paid five, you would get one angel. Mm -hmm. If you paid seven, you would get two. And if oh. you paid nine, you would get three. But like I said, there's a miracle cost that says when you flip it over, you are going to be able to uh, 
get X angels at the cost of three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, and so I on and so forth. Yeah, remember the miracle cost on the. If it touched your hand, the miracle cost was over and you couldn't it use it. Nineteen. Yeah, so this is, like I said, you can ask me questions, you have to look over down there, but basically this is kind of a mid-range age card. It's not super old, this is not something that you would see, like, a bunch of people playing um, in the olden days, I guess, or whatever, but uh, this was a card, uh, it was used in, in standard, it was used, it's still used today, I believe, as well. Okay, you guys have got your prices and you guys have them at home. Alright, yes. go ahead and reveal, 1 through 100 or 100 plus. 750. Seven dollars and fifty cents. Should I reveal? Yeah, you reveal. One dollar. One dollar. Yeah. Okay, this card is a buck forty. So I one point to Alicia. One point to Alicia. It looks, it's too expensive. Even with the miracle cost. Yeah. I don't know. The miracle cost is pretty good. People I thought know, this was going like, to be a very good card. But like when you draw it. You're not gonna always have the money to do that. Yeah, exactly, That's exactly. Hard the, it's it's hard to plan miracles. Yeah. So people thought these are a lot of miracle cards back in the day. People thought they were gonna be very valuable and very good. They are played, but most of the time it's like not when you want to play them, which is the problem with miracle cards. So yes, Entreat the Angels is a buck fifty, uh, which is a good price for it. It's a good card. It's fun. Something I'd play in Commander. Yeah. All right, next card. You ready? Oh, an older card. This one here is called Divine Intervention. It's an enchantment for eight, six colorless, and two white. You put two counters on this card and remove a counter during your upkeep when you remove the last counter from Divine Intervention. Uh, the game is considered a draw. So eight, play the enchantment, and then next upkeep, remove a counter, next upkeep, remove a counter. The, the trigger will happen saying the game is now a draw. Is this card? Uh, this is an older card. It's from 1994. It is from and uh, Legends. Some Legends. Oh dang! So it's an older card, and it is eight. It's an enchantment. This is a card that could have been played back in back in the day. <laughs> yeah, you get an idea. <laughs> yeah. And remember, the card's effect is just, in two turns, the game's a tie. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, reveal. Revealio. A hundred dollars. Now, a hundred exactly, or a hundred plus? A hundred. A hundred, okay. Well, it doesn't <laughs> matter, because we have a fifty and a hundred, and the closer value is to Alicia. This is actually a two hundred dollar card. I knew it. This... It's old. Because it's older, you know, that's partly re the reason. There are some cards that are old that are worth nothing, but uh, this is from Legends, which is a very difficult set to find, and it is a, I guess, very unique card where you just tie the game in two turns. The card itself is terrible. Yeah, it's not it's a good stupid. card. No, but and it it's does. Expensive. Yeah, stupid and expensive, but if it's you're older. You're losing if you're in the. If you're in the dumps. Like I guess, yeah, it's a way that, I mean, you don't want to ever play the game to where, like, well, I'm, I'm going to have this card just in case I'm losing. You always want to be hopefully winning the game. <laughs> but yes, the yeah, Vitamin is an older, rather, it's... I'd rather spend that money somewhere else. Yeah, it's, that's that's fair. Yeah, so this was my curveball to see if you guys would fall for it. Um, yes, Divine Intervention. Older card, terrible effect, worth lots of money. All right. Lots of fun to pull on people. Here we have another one here. This one here is called Sarah Avatar. Sarah's av Sarah Avatar's power and toughness are each equal to your life total. And whenever it goes to the graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle it back into your deck. So it's never gonna hit your graveyard. It's always gonna go back into your deck. It's gonna be a total of seven, three white and four colorless for a creature that's basically power and toughness equal to your life. So in Commander, it's a 40-40. And in uh, Standard or any of those other sets, it's going to, or uh, I guess those other formats, it's gonna be 20-20. Unless your life is lower, of course. So this is a big fat creature, basically, or it can be. Yeah. So yes, seven for a creature that basically is just big. Even if you're only at six life, it's still a six six. Um, the graveyard thing, it's just that card, right? Just that card, yeah. Whenever that card hits the graveyard, you shuffle it back in. That's a good effect and a bad effect, depending on the card, right? So there you go, uh -huh. big creature. Pay seven for a creature that's big. Okay, so you guys think you have a good idea of what it's worth? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe? Okay, let's <laughs> reveal them. One dollar. Fifteen. Fifteen and a dollar? Man, 
Ding, 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 another win here. This one here is actually like 50 cents. It's too expensive. It's too expensive? Yeah, $7. <laughs> $7? You get a big creature, though. But it's $7. What if it had trample? Then that would be good. <laughs> That would be good. Yeah, that's that's that's. It also true. depends on which decks you are running. Like in case like my life gain deck, that would be a very powerful card. Uh, I mean, it's just a twenty twenty though, or forty forty. That's it. So it dies to lots and lots of removal. There's a lot of interaction with it. I, it's a cool card. Back when I was a kid, this was like the end all be all. Wow, that's the biggest creature there is. Twenty <laughs> twenty. Yeah, and like shuffling it back into your. At first, I thought you said that whenever anything goes into the graveyard, oh, you get shuffled. And I was like. Oh, that sounds cool. And, uh -huh. then I, and then I realized, no, it's just that one card. Yeah, and that's not good either because you can't yeah. reanimate it. Yeah. So it goes to the graveyard, it gets shuffled back in, you lose the ability to reanimate this, which is actually, in general, not super good, but it can be, depending on the card. And there are some cards that will hit your graveyard, big cards, and they'll shuffle your entire graveyard back into your library. But just this card yeah, alone, that's what you're I right. Thought it was. I yeah. thought you shuffled the whole thing at first. All right. And keep you from you, you are out. down by three. You need to catch up. Alicia is dominating you. And she's been playing like 10 times less time than you. So come on. You better know these are the values of some of these cards. Okay, the next card here. The next card is called Kark Clan Ironworks. This is from Mirrodin. Uh, it is, I think, Mirrodin, I don't know, Fifth Dawn or something. It is a mana cost four. Four colorless. It lets you sacrifice an artifact and gain two colorless mana to your mana pool. It is a mana ability. So if you had something in play that was an artifact, you could sack it, and you could also sacrifice it, it to itself, and that would generate you colorless mana. It's pretty simple. Sack an artifact, two mana. Kind of like a ramp, mainly used in like artifact decks. Mm. What do you think? This, is, this one's a little tricky one, maybe. It's just an artifact for for four that they let you sack. I have to check to make sure I'm correct on it. Um, it's mid range old, not not super old. Um, let me see. I can look at the the year on this guy here. Uh, two thousand or nineteen two thousand four, two thousand four. So, I mean, the game was in uh, nineteen ninety. Well, this is thirty years as of as of this year. So it's been thirty out for thirty years. So. Okay, you guys have a price? Yep. Yes. I think I'll get you both on this one. Yeah, I don't think I got this one. All right, reveal. 25. 25? 30. $30. <laughs> and the answer is $32. Oh my God. Wow. That, you guys were really close. Yeah. You guys were really on it with that. This is an uncommon too. I thought that might throw you off. It's not even a rare. It's an uncommon, and it's thirty-two dollars. With a lot of the standardized I, stuff now, it doesn't it matter. It sounded things uncommon. like a pretty good card. It's really good. It's yeah. really, really good. It's used in a lot. It's not been reprinted in a while. It is very, it's very powerful. good. Yeah, yeah. Because you can sacrifice a bunch of those zero-cost mm -hmm. artifacts to it, so the artifacts like to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Car Clan Ironworks is amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, I didn't stump you with that one. My next one. <laughs> yeah, this one might get you too. Maybe. We'll see. Here we go. I'm going to flip over the next one. This is called a Cloudstone uh, Curio. Cloudstone Curio is a man, a, a, a artifact that costs three. It says whenever a non-artifact permanent comes into play under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. So let me explain how that works. When you have Cloudstone Curio on the field and you have a creature on the field, when you play a creature, because creature is the same type, you can return the other creature to your hand. Then you can play that other creature and return the other creature back. Or artifacts, or enchantments, etc. Et it has to be a non-artifact permanent though. So basically creatures, enchantments, uh, I guess it can even be lands too if you want. But yeah, you're basically able to bounce your, but only your own stuff for three mana. Okay, well, so what do you think about this card? You, you, um, you got an idea of it? You, are you like... Yeah, it's in my commander deck. But do you know the value of it, though, is no. the question. All right, and, and you, what do you... Yeah, you got it's an idea? It's been a while since I've seen this card. The use of it is there, yeah. depending on which kind of a deck you're running. It can be extremely useful, or not so much, but it can also do some very fun things. Show me what you guys got. Give me that magical number. Two. Fifty dollars and two dollars. That is a drastic difference. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Drastic. Let me see. 
Cloudstone Curio right now is going for $55. Yeah. 55 another win. So right now, Alicia, you are up by, I mean, I guess you got the Clan, Heart Clan Ironworks, yeah. and Alicia got the other four. Entreat, Divine Intervention, Sarah Avatar, and Cloudstone Curio. How are you guys doing? Are you guys getting closer than them? I don't know. She's. I think I would have had a tough time to beat her. And I looked up the prices. Like if you didn't, if I didn't see the prices beforehand, I would have a tough time. Okay. Uh, the next card up on the chopping I block. Just remember, with this one, it, it can do infinite combos. It can. This card here. This card is called Blasting Station. This is a three mana artifact. You can tap it and sacrifice any creature that you have to have it deal one damage to another creature or player. And whenever a creature comes into play, you can untap this card. So if I play a 1-1 one, one elf, I can tap this blasting station, sacrifice the elf, and then I can uh, do a damage to something. And then I can put another creature into play and rinse and repeat. As long as I have creatures to sacrifice and creatures come into play, I can tap this over and over again. Now, of course, you have to pay the mana for the creatures, etc., etc. But maybe there's some combos involved with this card? Is this card better than you guys may or may not think? Go ahead and write down your numbers. Thinking. I don't know. If this there's... card has fun combos yeah. with certain decks. Oh, okay. you're going to give Alicia some bonus information? Oh, I can just say I have it in one of mine. Okay, okay. But that doesn't mean it's worth anything. Most of his commander decks are worth nothing anyway. <laughs> not like my <laughs> supreme. <laughs> I got one or two that are actually worth a little bit of money. Well, but, I mean, but can you tell me what this one is? In fact, I gave you this card, so you better be able to give me a good price. You better be able to beat Alicia on this one. I gotta try to remember yeah, what I, I think it I was, too. One. I gave him this card here. He better know. <laughs> and then, um, depending on what the price is, whether he should be grateful for me giving it to him or not. We'll see <laughs> if, if he should be grateful. Okay, tell me what your price is. What you got? 20, 25 and 12. $12. Blasting Station is going for seven fifty. $7.50. This is an uncommon as well. Max has got it. He's, he's under. No, he's closer to it. Uh, but yeah, $7.50. This is a really, really, really good uncommon. And it has a ton of combos. Infinite oh, yes. combos. This card is used I consistently in a lot of decks. Yeah, and you guys got good good idea on the pricing on these guys. All right, all right. You guys ready for the next one here? Let's I think we're going to go into a new color. Let's go into Joven's Ferrets. Joven's Ferrets is a 1-1. Get ready, okay? Uh, if this is declared as an attacker, Joven's Ferrets gets plus zero and plus two until end of turn, so it'll turn into a 1-3 whenever it attacks. At the end of combat, tap any creature or creatures that block Joven's Ferrets, and these creatures do not untap during the controller's next untap phase. So, it's a 1-1 one, one for one, but when it attacks, it becomes a 1-3. If anything blocks it, they get tapped, and they don't untap during the next turn. This is a common card. This is from uh, a set called Homelands, and this is from the year 1995. Now, for some of you guys in the audience, you guys have probably have instantly a good idea of what this card is worth. If you're a more, more, you know, vintagey kind of a guy, if you've uh, played, been around and saw the older cards, uh, you would know the value of cards in this set and you would very much know, you might not know this card, but you probably know the value of it, okay? All right, let's go ahead and flip, flip, flip. A hundred. A hundred seventy-five. And 75. Okay, let me go ahead and see what we got here. Uh, this card is worth, who, think, who, who do you think is closer? She's got a better eye for the price on cards than I do. Me, because <laughs> it's old. This card here, you guys were so far off, it's insane. This card is worth 11 cents, 11 wow. pennies. Yes, why? They made a set called Homelands and I think they reprinted the heck out of it and no one liked it and there were no good cards in it. So this card here, along with almost every card in the entire set is worth nothing. So if you have a Homelands wow. card, there are like three cards worth anything. One is called like a Willow of the Wisps or something. It's like a Willow, I don't know, it's like, it taps and you can put fairies into play which is not good, but changeling cards. So you can play changelings from your hand for free. And then there's like two other cards in the entire set. And those cards there are only worth two to four dollars. So this set is horse poopy, horse poopy. And you are, I guess, were the closest with what, 75, 75. and 100? Man, I wish I'd get $100 on Joven's Ferrets. I'd have like, I'd, I'd be like, 
really wealthy because I bought a lot of these cards because I, I thought it was going to be good. I mean, card. think about this. This has got a lot of effects for one mana, and back in the yeah. day, that was a ton of effects. Yeah. Giving it plus you know, the defense, giving the ability to tap things up, and have them stay tapped. I liked this card. I bought like I spent a lot of money on these cards. I think it's I bought like 60 of them. undervalued. Well, not a lot of cards. I didn't spend a lot of money, I but do. I bought a lot of them, I should say. But yes, Jovin's Ferrets. It's one of my favorite cards for Magic, actually. And it's worth nothing. <laughs> and it's from Homelands. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys ready for the next one? Yes. Let's do it. The magical number for Time of Need. Time of Need is a sorcery that says you can search your library for a legendary creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then, shuffle your library. So it's one colorless and one green. Pay it, it goes to the graveyard, and then you're able to search your entire deck for a legendary creature and put it in your hand. It's a tutor for a legendary creature. Now, this can be used in Commander, it's not banned in anything, and it's a tutor, but it only gives you legendary creatures. Is it good? Is it bad? Is there any value to this card? Do people run it? Depending thinking, on the deck, you could run it. Thinking but... about what it could be. I have a five-color tribal Sisse deck that has legendary creatures in it. The C does. Yeah, searching up a Actually, legendary creature is not bad. I do, I do. Two different types. One super yeah. friends, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. And reveal the magic number. Five. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars and five dollars. <laughs> that is astronomically different. Astronomically. It sounds like a good card. It's, it's from cheap. It, it's from Kamigawa, uh, the original Kamigawa, not the newer newer one. Yeah. And it is a good card. It's actually a really good card, but but it's only in very specific decks because it has to, you have to be running quite a few legendary creatures for mm -hmm. it to be worthwhile. And it's not used in pretty much anything modern or any of that kind of stuff. So you're probably only going to see this in Commander. Unless I'm wrong and there is some modern deck out there, Pioneer, that uses it. But as far as I'm aware, it's not used. Um, but it is using Commander. So there is a value to this card. And that value is $2.80. Wow. Yes, $2.80. Max has tied it back up. So now we are at four to four. Uh, Alicia started strong with Sarah Avatar, the Divine Intervention, Entreat the Angels, and Cloudstone Curio. Um, and I was able to trick her with my Joven's Ferrets. <laughs> Both of them, in fact. I'm like, oh, old card, it must be worth something. Uh, the Time of Need, it, it's just a good card. I, thought, I think you're on the right track for knowing what a good card is. But this one here, it's an uncommon, it's not super old, and it's only playable in very niche decks. Uh, so yeah, sadly not $100, or I'd be a very wealthy man as well. Okay, <laughs> the last card. The last card to the magical number, and this is actually going to determine which of you is the all-time Magic the Gathering champion of all time, until the end of the world, <laughs> or the next video. You guys ready? And in this house. Are you excited? No. Do you think you can win this one? I don't know. You don't know? Let me look at, like, look at the next card. <laughs> okay, okay, I've got it. You guys ready? Here Let's we go. Magical number four. Uh, this one here is called Carpet of Flowers. This is uh, from the Urza set. It's one green and it's an enchantment. And it says, during your main phase, you may add up to X mana of one color to your mana pool where X is the number of islands an opponent controls. So for instance, if I play this on my turn and then it's your turn and you play an island and then it comes back to my turn, I check my upkeep and I say, Alicia, I choose you. You have an island. I'm gonna add one blue mana to my mana pool. And it stays in the field, it's an enchantment. So as long as you keep getting more islands, I'm gonna keep getting more mana of one color to my mana pool. It's an uncommon. Well, give me give me your thoughts as you guys are going through this without saying about price, just like what you feel about the card. We'll start with you, Max, go ahead. Same with the time of need. It works really strongly against certain decks, certain players, but if you have it in your deck and you don't play against those people, it's absolutely useless. Okay, and then give me a little bit from you without talking about price, trying to avoid that. Is it you add color? So, yeah, I, I play this on my turn. I play a forest, I play carpet of flowers. Your turn, you play an island. My turn, I check the main, oh, during the main phase, not my upkeep, sorry. During the main phase, so untap upkeep, draw, and then main phase pops on. This is going to trigger, and it's going to give me one mana of any color because you have an island. 
It's one every time? It's, it's, it's X, based on how many islands you have. So if you have three islands, then I'm gonna get three mana. If you have four islands, I'll get four. Who? Somebody Me. Else? I play Carpet of Flowers. Oh. I choose you during my next main phase, and based on how many islands you have, I get that much mana. Extra mana on my main phase. Does that make sense? So it adds up. It adds, it keeps going. So for instance, I can give you a little baby <clears throat> example. So I, I'm gonna go, okay, I play Carpet of Flowers, okay? And then you go, it's my turn. Okay, I'm gonna play, and we'll just do this upside down card as an, uh, an, uh, an island, right? On my next turn, because you have an island, I'll go, okay, it's my main phase. I have a carpet of flowers. You have an island. I get one green mana. And then I can use my other, my actual land to tap and gain an extra mana, giving me two. And it, it stays on the field, so the more islands you keep, you keep putting down, the more mana that this card keeps accumulating. But it's just islands. It's just islands, yes. Okay. You may add up to X mana of one color to your mana pool, where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. So you can target new different opponents every round, too. You can go, okay, Max got four oh, okay. islands now. You only have three, so I'm gonna choose him. Give me, so, give me four more mana this turn. So it's a bit of a ramp, but it's very situational, right? Uh-huh. So, is this a tricky one? Yes. All right, go ahead and write down your numbers. I'll give you a hint, both of you a hint. Did you write down your number already? I did. You did. Okay, it's it's not over $100. So you can change your vote if you think it was over 100. Nope. Okay. It's not, it's, 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 I would say it's a little bit old, um, but not, not super. I think this is 2000 and, no, 1998, this one. They have reprinted it though. Hopefully you got, hopefully I was able to give you all enough information to get close so we can make this really exciting. <laughs> okay. All right. Revealio. What do we got? Five. Five bucks 30. and 30. This is going to be close. Carpet of Flowers is $18.60. So, I don't know who's closer. She is by a dollar. Are you closer by a dollar? If it's eighteen, she gets it by twelve. So we have to. We have. Yeah. And I would have it at thirteen. Yeah. Really? So you won by <laughs> one dollar. One dollar. Oh well, congratulations, Alicia. You were successful in completing the magical number, and for that, you're going to win this amazing divine intervention. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You don't want this card anyway. No, I don't. <laughs> How about this? I'll help you make your next commander deck. Sounds good. It's good help. And with that concluded, yes, five for Alicia and four with Max. You actually came back at the end there, yeah. uh, but you're off by one dollar with the I carpet of flowers. I thought about changing my pricing to fifteen, but I'm like, it is extremely situational. Yeah. So it sounds like I figured a really it'd be a little bit off lower. It's only one dollar. It does. It does. It is, it's a great card to be used if you're playing against the right people. So there you have it, the magical number. Did you guys have fun? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was trying to base the prices off of how old it is yeah. and like if the card is good. That's probably how you want to do it most of the time. I like basing cards off of their versatility to my mindset, which can be a little Yeah, like, like how would I use this in my decks and would it be good? Well, this yeah. last one, the Carpet of Flowers, if yeah. you're playing four player commander, I think it's very likely that someone's gonna have islands. It's true. That is exactly why the card is worth some money, is because most of the time, like 80% of the time, blue is used. It's used a lot. I think it's green is first though, green and then is blue. The best color. Blue is my favorite color, yes. It's actually the color that I do not like to use anywhere near as much. But it's just, you know, blue is great and all, but Joven's Ferrets. This card, there's so much value there. Plus zero, plus two. And you tap creatures That's up. I thought Oof. It was gonna be good. It's yep. old and it sounds good. Yeah, just it's, it's homeland. So that's the rule. So now that you know and you guys know, homelands, if it's got the symbol, it's got like this little like bird in or like a world symbol. Yeah, it's a world oh, symbol. It looks like a um, bird kind of. Yeah, Yeah, but it's like a little world. If it has the world symbol on it, it's worth nothing. And the other rule of thumb is Do if you it know has. Any I don't. It's a white blood cell. Oh. 
Okay then, the more you know. And if it has this symbol here, this looks like kind of like a half of a podium that was like chopped by a samurai sword and it has a black border, that's legends. And that is money. Every card, not every card, but most cards oh. on the set are worth quite a bit of money. Of legends, yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff, because they're very old. Um, and until they decide to reprint all of the reserve list, uh, they should still stay pretty pretty good. And they're very coveted. Yep. So, I mean, what card, now last thing I asked me, what card do you think was the most, like, what did you pick do you think that was the, the most different? Like, why, like, oh, I picked $100 for, like, the, the 15 cent card. I think yours was Joven's Ferrets, yes. and yours was as well, right? So other than Joven's Ferrets, which I, I cheated, I used Homelands, what card do you guys think? <laughs> was the most surprising? Yeah, the most surprising. Um, maybe Time of Need? Time of Need, yeah. For me, it would have to be the uh, Avatar. The Sarah Avatar? Yeah. Let's, we, got, we got a Timmy over here, that's why. Timmy likes to play big creatures. No, I don't like to play big creatures. I like to have a little bit of versatility when it comes to my decks. <laughs> I have a <laughs> massive life gain deck. A thousand, a thousand, then it's just going to be blocked. Yeah, I block it with a 1-1. One, one. That's the thing. That's exactly right. Yep. Um, time of Need, yeah, you, you thought this was kind of like really useful to tutor, right? And yeah. it only costs two, and it searches for stuff that in Commander, typically you have lots of legendary yeah. creatures. Uh, yeah, I thought it would be more expensive as well, but I knew it was going to be worth something. I tried to give a wide variety of value here. Um, I don't know, did I accomplish that? Did no, I trick you, you did guys? Pretty good. Anywhere from 12 cents yes. all the way up to $200. Good. I hope you guys had fun. If you enjoyed this, then you can go ahead and watch the rest of our videos here that we'll be making uh, periodically, uh, I guess with the magic number. And then we'll do another series that's gonna be a staple or stinker, which is, I, I, I know that one other channel does something similar. We'll probably call it something else though, just so that they don't think we copied them, even though we copied them. Um, plagiarism. Yeah, not really. It's, it's a video, we can make whatever we want. I react to this or that. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us and thank you guys for participating of here. Course. Hope you guys had some fun. And as always, we look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next, next time. time.